you've tuned in to Gila Nehemia, Sacred Erotic Poetry, Sacred Sexuality, and Ascension Podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you um, for being here, for tuning in, for subscribing, for liking, for um, saying yes to your sacred journey in higher consciousness and to be in um, part of this collective awakening for yourself and for others and for um, all that is. So I'm excited today. The solstice is coming next week and um, I'm going to be talking about authenticity and I just and our really letting that light in, letting it shine, letting it um, overwhelm us with the fullness of who we really are um, to really connect into our own power. So let's just take uh, three deep breaths right now. I'm inviting you if you are driving to to just to make sure your, your eyes are on the road and you can take two, three deep breaths with us if you are not driving um, and if you're in a sacred space I would definitely recommend um, you know really relaxing lighting a candle you know just feeling that um, stillness within and um, closing your eyes so let's take three deep breaths now <sighs> deep from your diaphragm all the way up into the upper chakras above your head and please make sure you make a sound when you um, exhale God's first universe, I'm connecting to the womb of Mother Earth, connecting our hearts, our souls into the infinite oneness, connecting to our soul family, um, Andromedans, Palladians, our galactic family, magnetizing our soul families to us at this time, connecting into the central sun, into our own light, and into our own power. So I'm inviting you to feel that and um, I'm inviting you to also say an intention for yourself. So take a moment to do that. And let's just take another deep breath together. (sighs) Aho, and so it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, you know, I'm going to be talking about authenticity and rawness today as it connects into the summer solstice. i um, also going to be co- quoting uh, Eckhart Tolle and sharing my thoughts um, about something that I listened to from him earlier today. And I'll be sharing some feedback on, um, on my podcast. I'll actually start with the feedback. So I want to thank um, Sarah Hassman for sharing her thoughts on my previous podcast of... Um, your intuitive gifts are needed in the collective awakening. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for um, sharing these these three um, thoughts that you uh, posted in YouTube. Uh, Sarah says, love your explanations about silence and your acceptance is only important for you and God, the divine, not being concerned with what others choose to accept. Thank you. Also, how do you how you do what you can and then just relax and let it happen like you said wanting to move i also love the writing exercise you recommended we do each day to reach our true potential purpose gifts thank you again thank you sarah for sharing that thank you for being on this journey with me i'm so grateful that you shared uh, your thoughts with us um another prompt that i want to share with you i'm doing these uh self Love Daily in Guidely, um, a platform that I've joined a few months ago. Um, I, I share a prompt five days of the week. Um, it's free to join Guidely. I think you may have to become um, a premium member to join the groups. Um, so each day, we, you know, I share a different prompt, um, and I encourage you to um, to sit and just uh, feel into what needs to come out and then allow it to come out however way you want to um, on a piece of paper and then share it in the group. So the the quote I shared or the um, prompt I shared was um, 
I love being authentic and raw or I am authentic and raw. And, um, and I, and I feel like it's an important point to share it today. Um, as we are building on the silence of stepping into our intuitive gifts, the summer solstice is coming on the 21st. Um, and how, how can we be more authentic and raw and share all of our light, you know, as we have the longest day of the year and there's so much light on the planet, um, and it merge and it merges with our own light only to amplify, right? And our, and our light is full of all of who we are, our balanced selves, wherever you are in that journey, you know, um, whatever timeline you're on every day of um, every year on the summer solstice is the longest um, day. And so how do we connect into that length of light? How do we connect into that wavelength? Um, forget about the time issue. It is the longest day, um, you know, in terms of time, but it, it is also, I feel like this frequency, this wavelength, how do we connect into that wavelength, into that frequency of light, both within ourselves and within all that is, and with others um, who are also experiencing this. So, um, you know, there are parts of the world that have the midnight sun, you know, it's just like all of this, this light, how do we connect into that? And I feel part of that connection is part of being really authentic and raw, um, really real and, you know, complete with our own power. Because I feel like I may, I know I've shared earlier in previous podcasts, you know, sometimes we're afraid of our power, afraid of all this light, this multidimensional dimensional light that we, we have that's, you know, part of our very beings. That's the fabric of our soul and our heart and our, our body composition. It's light. Um, and, uh, and the more that we can harness that light, the more that we can connect into that authenticity and be uh, fearless about it, that's how you know, we, we move into higher vibrations. I wanted to share a quote um, from Eckhart Tolle that I found in Pinterest that relates to something I was listening to earlier today um, by him in YouTube. Um, he says in this quote, be the silent watcher of your thoughts and behavior. You are beneath the thinker. You are the stillness beneath the mental noise. You are the love and joy beneath the pain, Eckhart Tolle. So you are the love and joy beneath the pain. If you, wherever you are in your timeline, in your journey, in your um, awareness of your own thoughts um, and behavior, you, w he's encouraging and I'm encouraging, we're encouraging um, ourselves and others to witness ourselves, you know, witness the mental noise. What does a mental noise mean? It means, you know, the mental chatter, the, the thoughts that we say to ourselves. Um, and, you know, number one, I would advocate to make it more loving and compassionate. And also there are times when we're not, you know, well, let's face it, there are times when we, we get, we are hard on ourselves, that we are, um, that we replay events that have um, not worked out in our favor, or so we think. And, um, and, and sometimes that really uh, undermines our light or undermines the truth of our love and joy within us. It undermines the connection to that higher vibration that um, the solstice is reminding us that we can connect to. Um, you know, when I think of the sun, I used to think of masculine energy, but I don't think about that anymore. I think about the light. I think about the multidimensional light that it's exuding all of the time. And how do I connect into that? And I feel that connection again is into one being authentic and raw and also all of our power and to um, release the mental chatter, to move into the silence. Um, I took a course in India called Nada Yoga, which is uh, the yoga of sound. And um, it was a week long course where we studied um, sound and music and we sang together and we made different sounds and we con connected to our breath. Um, and, you know, we all realized at different times during that week how to connect into the silence behind the sounds. And that silence had a specific um you know, we recognized it, you know, to me, it was a tuning fork to others. It was slightly different, but we all had a very similar 
um, vibrational connection to that silence behind the sounds. And I know that sounds like an oxymoron. It sounds like a paradox. And I feel like this entire journey, what I really found were so many paradoxes. You know, um, to, what does it mean to be authentic? You know, aren't we authentic already? You know, aren't we just like showing up as ourselves? And honestly, um, I can say truly for me, and I speak, I speak primarily from experience, um, is that I wasn't <laughs> really showing up for myself in my fullness. And um, I wasn't always authentic. I, I was wearing masks. I was trying to please others. Um, I was afraid to be truthful um, and raw and powerful because I thought that, you know, that would mean I'm losing favor, whether it's a position, a job, a client, I don't know. Um, though the more I got into my uh, coaching business, uh, you know, that fell away quite quickly. <laughs> I was no longer ever interested in pleasing a client. I was more interested in speaking the truth. Um, and, and I continue to believe that. And I, and I feel like if someone isn't resonating with you when maybe they had, um, well, maybe then that that situation, that being at that moment in time is not for, for both of you to continue or it's just not the right time. Um, you know, there can be multiple reasons, but I think the real thing is to not have to dissect everything. You know, we, we spend, as you said in this, um, this video I watched of Eckhart Tolle, you know, we spend a lot of time overthinking, you know, overthinking um, and it's, you know, we don't really have to you know it is what it is it it happened the way it happened um, we can't change anything we can learn if we if we're able to understand the lesson so it's not repeated but i feel like even the repetition that goes on in our minds is a pattern how do we stop the pattern we do not we don't engage right <laughs> when when the thought comes up like okay oh it's this again yeah this, this, this didn't happen. I ate the sweet, even though I told myself I wouldn't. Um, or I, I personally wanted to stop eating sugar and I did for maybe two, two or three weeks. And then I, you know, started slowly again, but I'm really on a very much of a reduction. I, I eat it very, very infrequently. Um, and, um, and so, you know, it's, I'm being compassionate with myself. You know, this is a shift I'm going through, uh, having to decide, is that really what I want to do? You know, like I, I have to be just compassionate. It, you know, I am what I am. I allow myself to be who I am and there is no good or bad or, or anything. It, it, it is what it is. And I think that, you know, going back into the acceptance that Sarah had mentioned that, that full acceptance of who we are and also allowing that power to show its light to you, allowing your, your gifts are your power. It's your superpower. We all have them. You know, you may, um, as I said in my last one, you may be clairsentient, clairaudient, clairvoyant. Um, you may just know things and whatever it is, it doesn't even have to have a name. You know that you have this power. It may be your heart power. It may be your connection to your loved ones that like opens up for you. It may be this, you know, you're a prophesizer. Um, you are whatever you are, you know, forget the, the labels, but you have this power. You have this gift. You have this knowing. You have this map in your hearts and your souls and allowing it to unfold and understanding that it's something that you're co-creating with the universe on a continual basis and you're watching it happen um, is, is a miracle in and of itself. And I feel like this summer solstice is showing us that this miracle of your life, of our lives, is beginning to, um, it's, it's unveiling a new path this new beginning, this collective opening of our power. And I really feel that strongly. Like, honestly, I, I just recorded <laughs> the podcast and it didn't go quite right. So this is actually round two. And, um, and it's, and it's true, you know, I wanted to include the summer solstice and I feel like, okay, I, now this one is an amalgam of what I was share, sharing earlier and the summer solstice message and this message I feel, um, Right now, it's coming in so strongly that like 
the more that we allow this light into ourselves, it's not like anything that, you know, summer solstice happens every year, but this solstice is not like any other solstice. This solstice is the, um, you know, it's the opening of our hearts or the opening of the connection into the central sun, into our multidimensional light. And this has been happening over time. Um, I read uh, a, an email from a healer I follow, and she says, since 2012. And so if, if it's been happening for approximately 10 years, probably longer, um, I would say, but, you know, um, this this is what we've been working towards. This is our journey into our own home in our, in our souls. Um, because I feel like, you know, many of us may feel like we're not returning into this planet again. Um, and we don't really have to. Um, we are, we are home in and of ourselves. That's our authenticity in and of itself, right? You know, when we, we, when we really feel comfortable with ourselves, when we really feel like we're safe, we be, we are authentic, right? We don't have any masks. We let down all our masks with our loved ones, with our families, with our, um, amazing friends, with the, with nature, with our pets, you know, we're authentic. Um, so when we, can continue to be authentic in all situations. And we realize that authenticity is not in the presence of another, but in and of ourselves. When we're truly true to ourselves at all times, in all situations, which is not always easy, but it is the, in that truth that we shine our full light. And in this longest day of the year, when the sun is shining um, for the longest period of time, we can connect into that light and um, and utilize that energy to truly open up to all that we really are. Whether you're standing in that light when it's shining um, most of the time on the, on the 21st, or you're there for five minutes with the intention that I am, um, I'm connecting into that wavelength of all that I am and all that I'm becoming and asserting that you are desiring to be in your authentic raw power that is what will happen you know so part of i feel this summer solstice is to connect into our true intentions of all that we are and allow it to unfold and even if we don't know all the pieces which we never really do we connect into the wisdom within us the heart wisdom the soul wisdom to open up to that and, um, you know, it's, it's this, it's this portal, um, of, of truth that continues to, to really shine its light through our eyes. And, and I wanted to mention light. This is something else he said that I thought was really great. Um, he says that light, you know, he, um, he says a lot of things about being enlightened and, you know, you should definitely listen to Eckhart Tolle. I took a class with him and his wife, um, Kim Eng on, um, being the light, I believe it was called. It was, it was amazing. And, um, so he, he mentions that the word light in English is not just, you know, the light, like, you know, you can see, or you can even see within, but it's the, um, it's also the lightness, you know, the lightness of being, um, that you're no longer, uh, holding onto a lot of baggage. You're not heavy, you're light, right? The opposite of light is heavy. Um, so how do we become light? Well, we become light by releasing the mental chatter, by letting go of the noise, um, by stepping into the silence, by um, emptying ourselves. Uh, emptying could mean uh, releasing the thoughts onto paper. Uh, that's what I do as a practice. Um, releasing the tension in your body by movement, um, you know, whatever movement you want to do, but allowing it to allowing that stress or that buildup to be expelled so that you can then become empty and to receive the light that is outside and within you at the same time. Because sometimes we can't even receive our own light because of this mental noise or because of these behavioral patterns. Um, and we don't allow ourselves to see how powerful and light that we really are, how authentic 
and how um, our wavelength of love and joy can actually be uh, on a very high vibrational scale if we allow it. Um, but that means not falling um, into our own thought patterns, our own mental chatter, our own mental patterns, as well as not falling into the mental patterns and thoughts of others. Because as sensitive empathic beings that we are, we're very used to that, that code of behavior, right? But it's about saying no to the code of behavior. So how do we stop it, right? How do we actually stop it in its tracks? Well, it can be one just stating, I no longer wanna think that way anymore. I'm not going to listen to that, to that uh, self-talk. I won't, you know, and you just change the tape. Um, so how do you change the tape? Well, you can think of a good thought. You can think of a relaxing thought. You can actually do something that's very pleasurable, that makes you feel good. And then you no longer care about that other thought. Or you can even say to yourself, you know, I had to say this to myself the other day, I'm not going to do this right now. I'm not going to engage in, in that behavior at this time because I'm not ready to do that. I want to be in a good state and I'm, I have the right to decide what I'm going to do and when I'm going to do it. And that um, statement in and of itself allowed me to give myself the time to be who I wanted to be and allowed me to take care of my own psyche and my own emotions. So sometimes, you know, it could be about a person, it could be about a situation, it could be about work, it could be about your studies, it could be about anything. But when you don't want to do it at that moment or don't want to deal with a specific situation, it doesn't mean that you're hiding. It means that you're going to create the space to handle it. And when you're in that space to handle it, you're going to handle it with all of yourself and you're going to love yourself while you're doing it. And I feel like this is, this is an important point that's, that's surfacing right now that I wanted to really share. That's part of the summer solstice is like, and part of loving yourself um, because when we can truly love ourselves, we know when is um, the right time for us. You know, we think that it's all about divine timing. That's true, divine timing, that's something that we can't control. But that's also, it's also situations that we can prepare for our reactions. And we know that we're gonna react in a good state when we're relaxed, when we've given ourselves the time to take care of ourselves, to do our own self-care and self-love. And then we can show up into our fullness, not when we're depleted or not when we're half, um, half full, we can be full. And when we're full, we're going to show up in love and joy, regardless of what the situation is. And I feel like that is harnessing the light, harnessing the light of the solstice, harnessing this new landscape we're, we're stepping into for this new world order, for this um, new earth, um, for this uh, revamping of all the systems. So it's truly resonating with our hearts and our, um, our souls into our authentic truth and our authentic being for allowing ourselves to be weird, allowing ourselves to be not like the rest, allowing ourselves to be sensitive, allowing ourselves to put ourselves first as the first priority and allowing everything else to come second. I know I say that in one of my poems and I really do feel that as part of this summer solstice is to connect to what you are really, really um, desiring what makes you feel good. You know, I love summer because I love, I love the warmth. I love the sun. Even when it's hot, um, I enjoy, I enjoy the light. Um, I enjoy the longer, you know, days and mornings. Uh, I enjoy all of those things and it connects, it, it makes me feel relaxed. Sitting in the sun, um, relaxes me. And, um, so I'm inviting you to connect into that state of relaxation, into that state of pure joy and authenticity and rawness. I feel like this summer solstice is just um, another uh, invitation to step more into our own joy and self-pleasure. Because as we step into our own joy and self-pleasure, we open up, um, you know, it's just by, uh, you know, the next step is to open up into our own 
own powers, our own gifts, because we are relaxed, because we trust ourselves, because we realize we have this power, because we know that we can feel good on a more consistent basis. And we have the uh, choice, excuse me, to feel that way at every moment. And we do not have to allow ourselves to be pulled by anything and to only allow our joy and love to lead us. And when we feel that we're not in that state, we can always say, I do not want to be in the state of stress. What do I need to do to be in a state of, to get out of the state of stress and to move into more love and joy? The first thing I would suggest is just take a breath. to stop whatever you're doing that's creating the stress and to disconnect for five minutes, for 10 minutes, for a day, if you can, forever, whatever time it takes to get back into your true, true rawness of your true power. And it's in that state that you can then decide what you want to do next. And I feel like this summer solstice is reminding us that we have the power we have all of the tools that we need to shift and change. And it's up to us to decide if we revel in our weirdness, our uniqueness, our powerful um, intuitive gifts, and to what extent we want to do that, and to how it's going to affect our highest journeys, and what actually is our dream of our fantasy of a highest journey. How does that even template look like? Um, allow yourself to daydream in this beautiful summer solstice energy um, because it's bringing a light onto, onto your dreams. And so let yourself fantasize. Let yourself um, feel like you can have that happiness. Let yourself stop doubting and relish the thought of always feeling good and being with the people you love and who make you sing and dance and twirl and um, feel light and airy and ethereal. Um, allow all of that to come into your, into your emotions, into your heart, into your mind so you can release and help to continue to release the mental chatter and to step into more of the love and joy within you. So I want to thank you for listening today. I want to thank you for um, being with me as we enter into the summer solstice energy. It's already around us. Um, I'm encouraging you to smile, to just, let's just for a moment, think of a beautiful memory of a a time when we felt totally amazing. Could have been two minutes ago. It could have been a year ago. It could have been 25 years ago. It could have been uh, yesterday. So let's just all think of a beautiful, beautiful moment. Or moments. And allow that smile to come on your face with the twinkle in your eye. And know that you can have that moment, that feeling again and again and again. And it's your choice to step into all of your multi-dimensional light. And the summer solstice is an opportunity to remind you of your own power and to utilize your power for your authenticity, for your rawness for your truth, for your honesty, for all that you are, all that you were, all that you're becoming, and all that you are right now. I'm witnessing and honoring you in your power. Aho, and so it is. I believe in you. And take this moment to now believe in yourself and your unfolding. On that note, let's take three deep breaths to close this amazing, amazing transmission. (sighs) 
thank you, thank you, thank you for connecting your hearts um, together with the infinite oneness, with Mother Earth, with our Palladian soul families and Andromedans and our galactic families. Thank you, thank you, thank you for stepping in. Uh, for those of you who want to send me feedback, send me feedback at Gila, gilianhami.com or um, send me feedback in the podcast app you're listening to or connect into a discovery call with me. Um, the link is in the details or go to gilianhami.com to schedule a call. And you can also join me in Gaili for the self-love uh, daily prompts. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being you. I'm so excited for this summer solstice and for all of us stepping into all of our multidimensionality in our full light and lightness of being. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Until next time, namaste, om shanti, shalom.